What's going on, Columbus? This is yet another Let the Revolution Begin interview. I'm here with the band Spine Shank. We're here at Al Rosa Villa tonight. They're going to be playing with Simon Says and Typo Negative. How you guys doing? All right, all right. Can, we get our, can we get your names from you guys? Mike Sarkeesian. Sharky. Tommy. Johnny. Rob. I'm supposed to say Robbie. Oh. Wob. <laughs> Now you guys just uh, released your second LP called The Height of Callousness. Uh, what do you feel are some of the differences between it and Strictly Diesel? Um, this record I think is real. There's a lot of emotion in this and uh, for the most part we didn't listen to what anyone said. We made a record that we wanted to make. We didn't care what anyone thought about it. We didn't care the record company. We told everyone to basically go fuck themselves <laughs> and we made the record that we wanted. So it's like it's just something we're really proud of. We kind of consider this like our first record because it's some the first record we've actually been totally happy with. Oh, okay. Sounds good, man. Anybody want to say Yeah, I like, you know, I think the band is, when we did the first record, we were still, you know, a really young band as far as being together and writing together. And by this time, by the time we started doing this record, we'd been together for a long, long time. We'd been through a lot. And I think everyone was finally starting to be focused on the, on the same goal that we were trying to achieve. All right, guys. Uh, could you tell our viewers uh, what the name "Height of Callousness" means to you? Um, the name "The Height of Callousness" is like when you hit your breaking oh, point. Yeah, it's like, it's like the pinnacle of just being the most pissed off. It's like it's this thing where you hit it, and it's the point, the thing. You know, it's like the point of no return, basically. You know, like, like when you just hit this point where nothing matters, when you don't care, when it's it's just all about you and all your s feelings, all your emotions. They've all been stripped away from you, and uh, yeah. you know it's. I mean, we definitely hit that point, and we had to make the record. Yeah, and it's it's, it's the truest and most real point you could get to because when you get to the point where you just don't care, you're callous. So that you know you don't feel anything. Yeah. Nothing really matters. You just you do, yeah you do well, you make yourself happy, and it's just like you know. So I don't care what anyone says. So nothing can affect you once you hit that point anyway. So that's when everything goes out the window, and and the realness comes out. Oh, if you look yeah. up the word callousness, it, it basically means like total disregard for anything and yeah. everything. You know, exactly. that's pretty Being much the. a total dick to somebody. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we're just kind of dicks to each other. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, spine shank is obviously a thrust in the back. Now, how did you guys come up with that? Um, Beautiful here, did it? Oh, <laughs> oh thank you. It gets picked on. <laughs> um, it was just something we, when we were in other bands, the way we looked at the way people treated us, you know, I mean, everybody has to deal with it all the time, you know, somebody being really cool to your face, and then when you turn around, you find out they're talking a bunch of crap about you, and, and it just got really frustrating that the people we thought were our friends were, you know, the pe same people that were trying to sabotage us when we weren't looking, so it was just kind of like the people that try to hold us down is kind of what pushes us and makes us try harder, oh, yeah. and so it's kind of a tribute, you know, I mean, there's always going to be people like that, and you know there constantly is we meet new people all the time that stab us in the back so it's just it's kind of what fuels the band you know to keep going and you know people are telling us we're not going to ever make it we're not going to you know why don't we quit and get a real job it's just those are the people that we, you know we're doing it for and and they're what pushes us to keep going oh yeah yeah man do you want to say something um no all right <laughs> do you want to hit pause probably wants to get to it just hit the red button okay guys um what made you guys want to make aggressive music? Uh, I don't think it was something that we wanted to do. I think uh, it was something that just really came natural. You know, it, was, it wasn't like we set out and said, hey, let's, let's be in a heavy band. Yeah. And I think it's just a manifestation of feelings that everyone has acquired over the years of a lot of the things that everyone has went through. So it wasn't, it's, you know, it's like, I just, I ha we, ha we have no motivation to, uh, make pop music or, or <laughs> anything like that it's it's like it's like misery breeds creativity in, in a nutshell kind of a thing oh yeah and you tell me what's more fun a john denver concert or a slayer concert and there you go <laughs> well john denver of course <laughs> um what kind of issues do you guys feel that you cover in your in your music i guess that would be a question for you well it's you know whether i write the lyrics or tom writes the lyrics pretty much speak for the rest of the band a lot is is based on a lot of uh, I get it's safe to say self-hate and in, in in many ways um, certain issues that have ha actually happened to us you know I've written a few songs about 
different relationships in my life, whether, you know, it be with a friend or with a relative that is just went bad shit. Um, quite a few myself. Tom. That's why I relate. Songs oh. <laughs> it's all it's all emotions and stuff i mean dealing with your personal problems you have i mean everyone has the same thing whether it's depression anger i mean you have to get it out somehow and it's just you know there's certain bands that write about politics and stuff it's just not us it, everything we do is like inside ourselves and because it's all we know i mean but it's I, every, it's something i think everyone could relate to since you know everyone's got these same problems and they question who they are sometimes and everyone you know has to go through that and f actually find out who they are as a person so the album's one big exorcism <laughs> That's awesome, man. <laughs> <coughs> now, how were you guys signed to Roadrunner Records? They put a gun to our head. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they, 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 they uh, put a, a, a case of beer right next to a record contract and said, "All yours if you sign right here." Didn't basically. They actually didn't Roadrunner put us together? Oh, oh yeah. By popular belief, we uh, we are one of those uh, put together bands. <laughs> Actually, uh, what really happened was uh, Monty Connor, the vice president of uh, Roadrunner, um, had us sitting at a table, and he had a contract laying there. And uh, this guy named Luca Brasi was hanging out with him, and uh, he just put a gun to our heads and said, um, I will assure you that either your signature or your brains will be all over this contract. So that's what really happened. Boy, that's terrifying. Jesus Christ. <laughs> How was the concept of your new video for Synthetic brought about? Sounds like a question for you. You need to answer one, man. Uh, Nathan Cox wrote a treatment. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> it's, I mean, the lyrics, the lyrics to the song were uh, basically kind of, you've realized you're becoming something you never wanted to be. Yeah, exactly. And so we kind of took that and realized, you know, there's an oaf. We kind of did that and we talked to Nathan about it and it'd be kind of cool, you know, to have like a futuristic kind of feel and then we wanted the, the robot guy from the cover of the record to be in there and it just, it all, it all just kind of found the place but, you know, we basically had a rough idea, we gave it to Nathan and he pretty much came up with most of it on his own. So it's pretty cool. Sweet. Yeah, dude. Um, now if you guys could change one thing about the music industry, what do you think you would change? <laughs> Wipe it all away. <laughs> <laughs> no, you know what? I mean, it's it's like supply and demand kind of thing. It's like if you didn't have the labels as evil as they actually are, um, it would be chaos. It would be anarchy. And, you know, it wouldn't work either way. So it's like artists need labels, labels need artists, and uh, your consumers or, you know, your record buying public needs it all, actually, it needs the music. So it's like one big fucking chain that just runs around. It's a big old loop that, you know, it's bullshit, but everybody's got to deal with it. It's like you're, 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 you're basically only as good as the people that are working for you. You know, I mean, it's a business partnership, obviously. I mean, us being the artists, we're a lot more passionate about the business than they are. But it's that's just the way it is, you know. We're, we're partners, and we have to learn how to work together. And uh, people have learned to pick their fights with us. I know that. <laughs> But it's also, it's like, without the music, there wouldn't be business, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So exactly. so music is the first thing that matters, and everything else is pretty much secondary. Yeah, it's your art matters first, exactly. man, definitely. Uh, what are some bands you guys are into? Uh, New Kids on the Block. Go fuck yourself. Um, we've been listening to a lot of, like, Head P.E., Cold, uh, new stuff like Lincoln Park, System of a Down, obviously, Static X, all our friends. And then the stuff everyone's been listening to mostly lately is, like, old 80s cock rock Motley Crue Rat Wasp oh, Quiet Riot that's that's all you hear in here so <laughs> you guys are hilarious strip club music <laughs> uh, what kind of uh, reaction do you guys get uh, from crowds in other countries awesome get good awesome uh, we had a really dead crowd in Germany once <laughs> <laughs> yeah for the most part, everywhere you go, it's pretty much the same. I mean, kids that want to get into it, get into it. It's just over, it's, like in Europe, they jump more instead of actually pit. Okay. So, but it's it's really cool. Like England, their shows are really good. It's basically the same thing. You know, people are people everywhere, and, and they like to bust each other up a little yeah. bit. So it's it's okay. always fun. Well, you guys are like fucking number two in England or something, right? Are we? Album, right? I didn't know that. No, no, I, no, I didn't know that. Like, you know, it's in the uh, Metal Hammer magazine, man. You guys are like number two and fucking. Really? I had no idea. Who was number one, like fucking Mariah Carey or something? Damn, alright. Hey! Ow, it's, <laughs> oh, it's, it's strictly diesel, man. It's, it's number two. 
It's news to us. Maybe Splash yeah. can take Mariah Carey out on a date. Yeah, yeah, I doubt it. She's not going to touch you. Yeah. We'd ruin her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Columbus, this is uh, Trey signing out here with Spy and Shank. You guys want to say something to uh, the people of Columbus watching the show? Uh, just thanks to everyone in Columbus that, you know, likes and respects Spy and Shank and comes out to Spy and Shank shows, you know, and uh, we love you guys to death. And, you know, come to the show and come to the shows after this and we'll treat you right. Yeah. Freaks. <laughs> Bye. <coughs> Hey freaks, we're Spine Shank and you're listening to You're not bad watching it listening. Five, four, three, two, Freaks! We're Spine Shank. You're watching Let the Revolution Begin.